starting some seeds today. I'm really excited. We're at the end of Jan and the weather has been pretty mild, so I think I can get away with starting some little bits and bobs now. All the seeds that I start are going to go in my cold frame. It's quite small, but it's perfect for my needs and my small garden. I don't have any grow lights or don't start seeds indoors. I tried in the past, but I ended up having really leggy seedlings and then having to take extra care for them. And also I kind of got told off because it was taking a lot of space in the living room as we didn't have a dedicated room for that. So I invested in a small cold frame that sits on my decking and this is where I put all my seeds. Temperatures at the end of January are not very high, as you can imagine, even in a zone eight to nine. So um, I'm only going to start seeds that are labeled RD, like RD annuals or RD perennials, which means they could take some light frost if we still have those. Let's quickly run through the seeds I'm going to be sowing and then I want to show you how I sow seeds and talk a little bit about the kit that I use. Let's get started. If you only start one flower from seed this year, it should totally be sweet peas. They're extremely easy to grow. They produce a mass of scented flowers. They're climbers, so they're perfect for a fence that gets at least four to five hours of sun a day. They produce really well. You can start them under cold weather, so from January, do a couple of successive sowings until March and then you'll have blooms all the way till the end of the summer. So I'm finishing the seed packets from last year for two varieties. Here comes the girls and Old Spice Mix. I'm also going to try a new one this year that I found at Wilco called Singing the Blues. I'm excited to see how it does. A new for me this year and as you can tell I found a seed bargain. So one pound for a packet of seed I thought that was really good. So I have to try those. First sowing of Cosmos, this is a variety, a double, so that's going to be interesting. Some white Cosmos. I have a lot of other Cosmo varieties, but we'll start them towards March. And new for me this year, Aquilegia, I got two varieties, Petticoat Pink and Lime Sorbet. I think those are going to be glorious. I also want to try this therins. I think it's going to be really gorgeous. I hope I can grow it from seed. And another new variety for me this year, Nicotiana Lime Green. I think that's going to be gorgeous. I'm trying again Echinacea. I haven't had much luck in the past with it, but we'll see what happens. Actually, this seeds and the next three ones I'm going to show will need a little bit more warmth to get started. I'm also going to try to find some space for Snapdragons. Lupins. I hope I can raise those from seed. I did try some from seed last year and they flowered. I'll try to find some footage and they produced the cutest little tubers. So I'm going to try again and this time start them a bit earlier so that they can flower earlier in the season. So what you need typically is compost to start your seeds. So you want to look for something that says suitable for seed starting or sowing mix or repotting mix, something that will be a little bit more fine. The first bit of kit I'm using is a 24 count cell plug tray. I typically use this for smaller seeds. I find them pretty space efficient and also easy to fill up with compost. I can actually fit three of those per shelf of my mini cold frame. Here I'm just making sure that there are no air pockets and that the soil is properly packed in. I'm also using grow bags. They're a little bit more fiddly to fill up, as you can see, but they're really great because they can be planted directly in the ground as the bags are compostable, so they will biodegrade. I typically place them in a tray lined with a wicking mat, so I just have to top up with water and avoid overwatering. The larger size is actually perfect for sweet peas that don't like their roots to be disturbed. And of course, you're going to need a pen and a label to remember what's what. Sweet peas are those plants that don't want their roots to be disturbed. They create a tap root to draw water. This is why typically it can be recommended to sow them where they are to flower. This is why I'm choosing a container that has a lot of space for the roots. But you could also reuse some plastic cans, for example. I would say something at least 10 cm long, but I find that those grow bags work pretty well. I'll link them down below if you're interested. So we're going to sow my three varieties of sweet peas. Those two that produced really well for me last year. I'll pop a picture on the screen of the harvest last year. It was, it was really beautiful. This 
is what the seed look like. I'm not planting from the crop that I harvested last year because those seeds will stay fresh for longer, so I want to finish my older seed packet. I have to sow the seeds 1.5 cm deep. I'm making a pre-hole to help the seed go down to the desired depth and placing three seeds per cell. Then simply pushing down the seed to the desired depth or covering it back with compost. I'm just going to repeat that process for the other sweet pea seeds. Now for some geraniums. Some seeds come in a sleeve and that's really great if you don't finish a seed packet in one go. Those two varieties are new to me, a double one and a white one. I'm really excited to see how they do. For Cosmos, I'm only doing one seed per cell and then topping up with compost or pushing them down to the desired depths. And typically, all the info you need to be successful is at the back of the seed packet. Some of those seeds like the dahlias, the lupins and the echinacea would definitely benefit from warmer temperatures to germinate, but it's okay, they can take their time. These look like foxglove seeds, super super tiny. And now the waiting game begins. I'll be checking on those daily and using my mister if I find that the cells are drying out. Everyone is nice and tucked in. I added those plastic lids to make sure I can retain as much moisture as possible. And all I'm doing now until I see some germination is just using my little bottle sprayer to keep the soil moist. Thanks for watching this video. I hope you found it helpful and let me know what other seeds you're starting at the end of Jan or February. I'm interested to know. Next week, I'll be doing a winter window box and also resprucing my little table behind me where I have my autumn planters. I'll see you next time. Bye. Those were ornamental kales, but I want to show you that you can also use these kind of crates that's open at the bottom so that just the water can rush through. I just repotted these recently.